Aloha everybody, it is I, the Great Clement, and uh, today I'm going to be looking at one of my favorite 3D platformers on the Nintendo 64, made by Rareware. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this one. This is Banjo-Kazooie. This game's soundtrack is incredible. <laughs> oh, I love this game. This is one of my favorite games of all time. This is probably in my top five N64 titles. Uh, this is just a really fantastic uh, 3D platformer where you're going to be collecting a lot of collectibles. You know, jigsaw pieces, uh, musical notes and whatnot. You have three save files to work with. Uh, I have my save one, which is complete. It has all the hundred, all 100 jigsaws, all 900 notes, and I'm going to be getting that uh, during the course of this playthrough. So uh, let's get into it and enjoy the opening. Ah! 
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so I wanted to be silent for the intro, not only to give you a taste of the sound effects in this game, because every time you get into a dialogue with someone, uh, they always have this over-exaggerated... <laughs> I know some people I know in, in high school actually found that kind of annoying, but uh, I think it has a kind of charm to it, you know? I really enjoy this game. Uh, so this is Banjo-Kazooie, a 3D platformer, where uh, you're going to be going to a whole bunch of di various different worlds, uh, collecting things so that you can move forward and forward through the evil witch Gruntilda's spooky castle lair so that we can rescue Banjo's sister Tootie, who has been stolen by this evil witch to, uh, you know, make the witch hot. <laughs> well, we'll see that later. Anyway, this whole tutorial part, we can push A here and get him to explain everything to us, but uh, we're good enough, Bottle Brain. I know how to play this game. Everything's gonna be hunky dory. This is my LP. What are you trying to be the commentator, Bottles? Y y you trying to steal my thunder? I'm the one explaining how things work. <laughs> so we are playing as Banjo and Kazooie. Banjo the bear and Kazooie the uh, bird. <laughs> I know, I probably shouldn't know what she is, but I don't care. Kazooie's also a, a, a ladybird, so, uh, you know, some people think it's a guy. No, no, Kazooie's a girl. Anywho, in Spiral Mountain, before we move on to Gruntilda's lair, uh, we do want to go to every little area to find a honeycomb. He wants honeycomb! Because if you collect six of them, they increase your overall health. So, uh, there are six in Spiral Mountain, so if you want one little extra life bar before you actually start moving on to Gruntilda's lair, that would be a wise decision. So Banjo is capable of a whole bunch of things thanks to Kazooie, you know, hanging out in his backpack. You push A in the air, and he does, this, and she does this little hover thing that lets you get a little bit more distance than just regular jumping. It won't keep you in the air forever. It's basically a small little glide, if anything. But uh, you know, it's there. Banjo and Kazooie can swim underwater. However, if they cannot stay underwater for long, otherwise they will drown. That's how life works, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, but you can always get up, and uh, certain levels with underwater sections have bubbles that you'll be grabbing to restore your breath, so you don't have to worry too much about that. In terms of attacks, uh, Banjo can push the B button while standing to do a series of punches. I've never actually found it that particularly useful. It's never been my go-to move for any of the enemies. Uh, if you roll, I mean, if you if you move and push the B button, uh, you'll do a little somersault roll thing where you roll into a guy, and it's not as strong as the beak attack, but it is effective if you want to hit people and you, you're not really worried about accuracy and whatnot. This move I'm doing right now, by holding Z and pushing B, you do a much strong a much stronger charge attack that is really good for killing enemies really badly. Again, if you jump and push the B button, you do this little beak attack where Kazooie will peck at the enemies, and uh, it's a lot stronger than simply rolling into a guy. It generally kills most enemies in one shot, because all the enemies in the game don't really have a big health bar. But there you saw, I got six honeycombs, I got an extra life bar. Every world in this game has two honeycombs located within it, uh, so, you know, keep an eye out for them. They're, de they're definitely the hardest collectibles to find, they're the ones put in the most hidden spots, but uh, it's totally worth it by the end of the game, when you're a very healthy, very healthy bear. <laughs> and I just want to say, Banjo-Kazooie, you, maybe you could have avoided this if you didn't, you know, live in a house that's right next to a giant castle with a freaking witch for a face. You didn't- I mean, look at this castle! You didn't think moving here would be a little bit of a bad decision? You didn't think it would be a little bit awkward living next to this thing? I don't think nice people are going to live in this place. I don't think any- I mean, maybe if it's really cheap. Maybe. But I don't know if real estate goes towards evil witch castles. I don't know what I'm saying. But, this is Spiral Mountain. It basically acts as the opening hub world. There's really not much to it other than the six honeycombs, and the fact that you can go back to Banjo's house to do some puzzles, but uh, I'll be showing those off later. Oh, <laughs> 
So the thing I love about Gruntilda the Witch, every time she talks, she always rhymes. <laughs> no matter what she's saying, she always has to make it so her second sentence is like a rhyme of the first sentence she said. I don't know, it's just, it's really fun a uh, villain trait that I wish carried over into Banjo-Tooie. It did for Nuts and Bolts though, so I'm, I do appreciate Nuts and Bolts for doing that at least. But uh, that is a jiggy piece, ladies and gentlemen. One of 100 in the game. And, uh, again, this is a collecting type of game. You're not going to be progressing to the end of the game unless you're collecting these things. So you definitely need to look out for them. Now, I can't climb this hill, so... That means we're going to have to find some way to get up here. And we're going to find it by going to this little mountain area over here. The jiggy pieces are needed to open worlds. And the worlds themselves contain more jiggy pieces which unlock more worlds, which get you further to the castle and get you to Gruntilda herself. This one is the first world, and go figure, one jiggy piece is needed to unlock it. And what do you know, we got one. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but either way, uh, this is a fantastic game. One of my favorites. The soundtrack is, is glorious. You know, the sense of humor is rich. Uh, the platforming and everything, it just feels so nice and uh, I really love this game and so I hope everyone's gonna enjoy the ride next time we're gonna be going to Mumbo's Mountain so enjoy